Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be dissertating and talking about misconceptions about the zodiac sign Virgo. Now, don't get me wrong, out of all the 12 zodiac signs, Virgo is, on average, I believe, probably the most meticulous, scrupulous, uh, law-abiding, very uh, careful, very, I would say, as far as following uh, regulations, policies, say at work, they're very good, they're very, uh, they like to be proper and do the right thing. There seems to be more of a proclivity for that with Virgo as opposed to any other sign. However, uh, there's a lot, there's, in charts are going to have, I guess, what we could call contradictory things and some contraindicators. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about some things where, uh, so how the misconceptions of Virgo, I think, is, uh, is often that a lot of people may, th well, some people may think that these Virgos are going to uh, exhibit these characteristics 24-7. When the reality is there's modifying influences, and I'm going to get into that. Now, let's take somebody that is a, um, that is a Virgo, that has the, let's say they have the Sun, Moon, or Ascendant in Virgo. And let's say that they have, um, they're on the cusp of Leo or Libra. Now, if they're on the cusp of one of those signs, they're not going to, uh, they'll, they'll have a little bit of flavoring of Leo or Libra uh, in them, and in, in that they're not going, they, they, they may not exhibit those characteristics often uh, as strongly as opposed to somebody not on the cusp. Now, let's say that the Sun, Moon, or Ascendant is in a different sign. Let's say somebody has the Sun in Virgo, and let's say maybe the person has a Pisces or Cancer uh, Gemini Ascendant, well, they're not probably going to be as super uh, systematic and organized as the typical uh, Sun in Virgo. They're going to have a little uh, blending because Pisces rising is not always the type that's going to be enamored or infatuated uh, with details, and they're more about the whole picture as opposed to Virgo. So they're not going to be uh, quite as uh, super, maybe as neat or meticulous as somebody that would have Virgo Sun and Rising, for example. Now, another uh, flavoring you can look at if somebody, it, now if somebody's born in the second or third deacon of Virgo, they're going to either have Capricorn or Taurus, uh, a little flavoring with that, and Capricorn, uh, now, Virgo being a mutable sign can be very adaptable and pliable, but if Capricorn or Taurus is blended in, uh, you're going to see a little bit more of an of a, intransigence, a little bit more of a single-minded uh, focus and slightly less adaptable, especially if Taurus is the deacon or decanate, which would fall between 20 degrees and 29 degrees, uh, 59 minutes of arc. As far as uh, as far as that Taurus Deacon would go, and uh, so that's something. Those are some things to look at. Also, a Virgo being uh, can be known to be fairly shy. Now, if somebody has, let's say, the majority of their planets above the horizon, say in houses seven through through twelve, and even if they have, say, they have Virgo rising. That will modify the, the, maybe the introversion, the shyness a little, but the person will be apt to be a little bit more gregarious and extroverted as opposed to the average Virgo. Or another thing could be, let's say, if the person has a uh, majority preponderance of planets in, um, in uh, masculine or extroverted signs, that will modify things as well. If the person that has Sun, Moon, uh, Virgo, Sun or Moon or Virgo, and they have, uh, let's say they have most of their planets above the horizon, and they have the majority of them, and masculine signs, that would really be a strong modification, at least in my opinion. Now, 
Another thing to look at, Virgo is often associated uh, being about um, service to others and seems to be more uh, about, I would say, uh, more of a, sub there, there seem to be more fit for a subordinate or subservient position. But if the person has most of their, their planets, their major influences in masculine signs, this may alter things a little bit. And it could also, if the person was to have, let's say, um, majority of their planets, let's say, on the left side of the chart, that would be in houses 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, and 3. The person would be, could be strongly more about self-reliance and independence, and this, and also they could be more, well not, I'm not saying just self-reliance and independence, they're more about self-starting, which could really be about leadership and taking, and maybe about initiating things on their own, which may lead to perhaps being in a more of a, let's say, uh, more of a position of authority, or if the person has a strong 10th house with a plethora of planets in the 10th and has their 10th uh, house ruler, say, making a lot of uh, good aspects, this could be a person also that might be a little bit more about in a more of an authority position uh, as opposed to uh, being in a subordinate one. So that's another thing to look at. And I want to backtrack and another thing to look at if somebody has, let's say if they have the sun or moon in, in Virgo, and they had an extroverted ascendant such as Leo, that's going to modify things as well. The, mo the, the Virgo is also known to be very reticent and very can be very humble and modest. And this is no offense to somebody that's a Leo, but let's say that they are on the cusp of Leo and they're between 0 to 5 degrees Virgo in the Sun, Moon, Ascendant. That will alter things. That person might not uh, be as really super modest as otherwise indicated because Leo is that flamboyant showy sign. If somebody were to have the Leo Ascendant and have the Sun or Moon in Virgo, that will make things a little bit uh, different as well. And just like a Virgo Ascendant that has the Sun or Moon in Leo, that person will uh, have a little bit more of a Leo uh, flavoring. So it and also be more have that more gregariousness and even if the person was to have let's say a, a masculine ascendant regardless whether it was Leo or, or Gemini or Libra or any one of the masculine signs this will alter the shyness and the introversion to some degree as far as uh, Virgo goes so really that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to get with you on as far as uh, the misconceptions about Virgo, and it's just basically um, that that Virgo will have many, often have many of those characteristics associated with them. But you have to remember that there are going to be uh, modifying influences in the natal chart, and you know how I always say, don't isolate any one particular thing in the natal chart. In the in in Virgo, having somebody having a Sun Moon ascendant in Virgo is no exception either. So uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to get at. And people, uh, two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because a person, astrologically, is the sum of all their components in their natal chart and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.